Exodus 12:22 through 51 And you shall take a bunch of hyssop, and dip it in the blood which is in the basin, and touch some of the blood that is in the basin to the lintel and the two doorposts. And none of you shall go outside the doorway of his house until morning. And Yahweh will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and he will see the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts. And Yahweh will pass over the doorway, and will not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you. And you shall keep this event as a statute for you and your children forever. And it will be, when you enter the land which Yahweh will give you, as he has promised, you shall keep this new slavery. And it will be when your children say to you, What is the meaning of this new slavery to you? That you shall say, It is a Passover sacrifice to Yahweh, who passed over the houses of the sons of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians, but delivered our homes. And the people bowed low and worshipped. Then the sons of Israel went and did so, just as Yahweh had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. Now it happened at midnight that Yahweh struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. Then Pharaoh arose in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was no home where there was not someone dead. Then he called for Moses and Aaron at night and said, Rise up, get out from among my people, both you and the sons of Israel, and go, serve Yahweh as you have spoken. Take both your flocks and your herds as you have spoken, and go, and bless me also. And the Egyptians strongly pressed the people to send them out of the land in haste, for they said, We will all be dead. So the people took up their dough before it was leavened, with their kneading bowls bound up in the clothes on their shoulders. Now the sons of Israel had done according to the word of Moses. They had asked from the Egyptians for articles of silver and articles of gold and clothing. And Yahweh had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they let them have what they asked. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. And the sons of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Succoth, about six hundred thousand men on foot, aside from the little ones. A foreign multitude also went up with them, along with flocks and herds, a very large number of livestock. And they baked the dough which they had brought out of Egypt into cakes of unleavened bread, for it had not become leavened, since they were driven out of Egypt and could not delay, nor had they prepared any provisions for themselves. Now the time that the sons of Israel lived in Egypt was four hundred thirty years. And it happened at the end of four hundred thirty years, to the very day, that all the hosts of Yahweh went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be kept for Yahweh, for having brought them out of the land of Egypt. This night is for Yahweh, to be kept by all the sons of Israel throughout their generations. And Yahweh said to Moses and Aaron, This is the statute of the Passover. No foreigner shall eat of it. But every man's slave purchased with money, after you have circumcised him, then he may eat of it. A foreign resident or a hired person shall not eat of it. It shall be eaten in a single house. You shall not bring forth any of the flesh outside of the house, and you shall not break any bone of it. All the congregation of Israel shall celebrate this. But if a sojourner sojourns with you and celebrates the Passover to Yahweh, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near to celebrate it, and he shall be like a native of the land, but no uncircumcised person may eat of it. The same law shall apply to the native as to the sojourner who sojourns among you. So all the sons of Israel did, as Yahweh had commanded Moses and Aaron, thus they did. And on that same day, Yahweh brought the sons of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their hosts. Luke 15 Now all the tax collectors and the sinners were coming near him to listen to him. And both the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable, saying, What man among you, if he has one hundred sheep and has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open pasture, and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance." 
Or what woman, if she has ten drachmas and loses one drachma, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the drachma which I had lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And he said, A man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that falls to me. So he divided his wealth between them. And not many days later, the younger son gathered everything together and went on a journey into a distant country. And there he squandered his estate living recklessly. Now when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country, and he began to be impoverished. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he was desiring to be fed with the pods that the swine were eating, and no one was giving anything to him. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired men have more than enough bread? But I am dying here with hunger. I will rise up and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. So he rose up and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fattened calf, slaughter it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. And summoning one of the servants, he began inquiring what these things could be. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf, because he has received him back safe and sound. But he became angry and was not wanting to go in. And his father came out and began pleading with him. But he answered and said to his father, Look, for so many years I have been serving you, and never have I neglected a command of yours. And yet never have you given me a young goat, so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your wealth with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, Child, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice. For this brother of yours was dead and is alive and was lost and has been found. Job 30 But now those younger than I laugh at me, whose fathers I rejected even to put with the dogs of my flock. Indeed, what good was the strength of their hands to me? Vigor had perished from them. From want and famine they are gaunt, who gnaw the dry ground by night in destruction and desolation who pluck mallow by the bushes, and whose food is the root of the broom tree. They are driven from the community. They shout against them as against a thief, so that they dwell in the slopes of the valleys, in holes of the dust and of the rocks. Among the bushes they cry out. Under the nettles they are gathered together. Wicked fools, even those without a name, they are scourged from the land. And now I have become their mocking song. I have even become a taunting word to them. They abhor me and keep a distance from me, and they do not hold back from spitting at my face. Because he has loosed his bowstring and afflicted me, they have thrust aside their bridle before me. On the right hand their brood arises. They thrust aside my feet and build up against me their ways to disaster. They break up my path. They profit from my destruction. They have no helper. As through a wide breach they come, amid the storm they roll on. Terrors are turned against me. They pursue my nobility as the wind, and my hope for salvation has passed away like a cloud. And now my soul is poured out within me. Days of affliction have seized me. At night it pierces my bones within me, and my gnawing pains take no rest. By a great force my garment is distorted. It seizes me about as the collar of my tunic. He has cast me into the mire, and I have become like dust and ashes." I cry out to you for help, but you do not answer me. I stand up, and you carefully consider how to be against me. You have become cruel to me. With the might of your hand you hunted me down. 
You lift me up to the wind and cause me to ride, and you melt me away in a storm. For I know that you will bring me to death and to the house of meeting for all living. Yet does not one in a heap of ruins stretch out his hand, or in his upheaval is there a cry for help because of them? Have I not wept for the one whose life is hard? Was not my soul grieved for the needy? When I hoped for good, then evil came. When I waited for light, then thick darkness came. I am boiling within and cannot be silent. Days of affliction confront me. I go about darkened, but not by the sun. I stand up in the assembly and cry out for help. I have become a brother to jackals and a companion of ostriches. My skin turns black on me, and my bones burn with fever. Therefore my harp is turned to mourning, and my flute to the sound of those who weep. 1 Corinthians 16 Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I directed the churches of Galatia, so do you also. On the first day of every week, each one of you is to set something aside, saving whatever he has prospered, so that no collections be made when I come. And when I arrive, whomever you may approve, I will send them with letters to carry your gracious gift to Jerusalem. And if it is fitting for me to go also, they will go with me. But I will come to you after I go through Macedonia, for I am going through Macedonia. And perhaps I will stay with you, or even spend the winter, so that you may send me on my way wherever I may go. For I do not wish to see you now just in passing, for I hope to remain with you for some time, if the Lord permits. But I will remain in Ephesus until Pentecost, for a wide and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. Now if Timothy comes, take care that he is with you without fear, for he is doing the Lord's work, as I also am. Let no one despise him, but send him on his way in peace, so that he may come to me, for I expect him with the brothers. Now concerning Apollos our brother, I encouraged him greatly to come to you with the brothers, and it was not at all his desire to come now, but he will come when he has opportunity. Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. Now I exhort you, brothers, you know the household of Stephanus, that they were the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have devoted themselves for service to the saints, that you also be in subjection to such men and to everyone who helps in the work and labors. And I rejoice over the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus and Achaicus, because they have supplied what was lacking on your part, for they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore, recognize such men. The churches of Asia greet you. Aquila and Prisca greet you heartily in the Lord, with the church that is in their house. All the brothers greet you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. The greeting is in my own hand, Paul. If anyone does not love the Lord, he is to be accursed, Maranatha. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. My love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen.